Hello, my name is Jamie Tucker Foltz from Harvard, and this is joint work with Tal Alon and Inbal Talgum Cohen at the Technion, Magdalene Dobson at Carnegie Mellon, and Ariel Prakacha, my advisor at Harvard. The, this paper is about a mechanism design problem that's motivated by the design of course syllabuses. So many of you in the audience have probably written or at least seen one of these before, and typically the grading section looks like something like this. There's several subcategories that the students are graded on, and they get combined into a total grade, usually via some linear combination of the subgrades. And so the question I want to ask is, why do we even do this? What is the point of making it 30%, 10%, 25%, 35%, etc.? Can we do something better? Um, and, and of course, to answer the question, can we do something better, we really need to ask the first question is, what is the objective in the first place by, by making these, um, these grading schemes look like this? And in a recent paper, it says from uh, an EC19, Kleinberg and Raghavan introduced a new model to answer these questions. And their answer to question one, why do we do this, is to induce desirable behavior. The professor has in mind what they, some behaviors that they want the students to do. And they think by weighting the, the grades in just the right way, they can in, in, induce them to, to, to behave in these desirable ways. And so our paper is based on this model. And it's a broadly applicable model where you have an evaluator, think of that as the teacher, that must design some mechanism to evaluate an agent. Think of that as the student. This will be the teacher student is the running example throughout this talk. So Kleinberg and Raghavan uh, show um, a lot of nice results about how you solve this mechanism design problem. And they also give a polynomial time algorithm um, to find a good mechanism given information about how the student's um, effort translates into the things that the evaluator is able to observe. And so our paper is extending this model to consider multiple types of agents. Okay, the, the, the prior work was only in the case where all agents have the same type. And we find that there are surprising new challenges. Um, a lot of the things that uh, hold in the one agent case do no longer hold with multiple agents, and they require some new innovations to overcome them. So the, um, I want to start by just uh, briefly out outlining what, what this model is. And so in the model, you have uh, agents investing effort into actions, okay? And some of these actions, which are frequently right in green, are good actions, um, and some of the actions in red are bad actions, and we want them to take the good actions. And the, the principle, the evaluator does not get to observe these actions. They get to observe some feature values that are linear combinations um, of, the, of the original actions. Um, and the, the designer then sets the payoffs of the, the agents that are being evaluated as uh, some function of those features. And so as a computational problem, the input can be thought of as what are the set of actions, what are the set of features, and how do the actions convert into features? How does the effort convert? And the output is what the designer is trying to find, how to incorporate these feature values into a payoff such that the agent wants to only choose the, the green um, admissible actions. Okay, that's, that's the designer's goal. So to give an example, this is based on an example from Kleinberg and Raghavan's original paper, where it's, again, this classroom setting. So we have two features that the, the, the professor, say, is the evaluator. They get to observe the homework grade and the exam grade of, of the students, and they have to combine these into a final grade for the class. And we suppose that there are three actions the students can take. We would like them to study the material. That's the admissible action, X2, but they could also cheat on the homework, X1, or cheat on the exam, X3. And what the student chooses after reading the course syllabus and finding out how they're going to be graded, they're going to choose an effort profile um, X1, X2, X3 um, is the amount of time they're spending on, on these three actions. And we assume without loss of generality that they have one unit of effort to divide among these three actions. And then, so for this instance of the problem, we, we might suppose that this is how the, the effort converts for the students. So for example, the feature F1, the homework grade is going to be nine times the amount of time that the student spent cheating on the homework plus six times the amount of time the student spent studying the material. And so you can see here in this instance that the studying will help both features and cheating will only help one of them. So it's a, it's a kind of realistic example. And so what, what, is the, what does the designer do? What does the professor do? They're trying to come up with some mechanism of these that takes us and put these feature values F1 and F2 um, to incentivize all agents to choose the profile 0, 1, 0. So all action is invest, all effort is invested into X2, the, the one admissible action. And so if you stare at this, 
you might think, okay, what, what, what is the professor going to do here? Well, you can see that um, for either the homework grade or the exam grade, cheating for to improve that score is yields a higher marginal benefit than studying the material. So if the grade is just based on one of these two, um, then that's not going to work. The, the student will want to cheat. But uh, so they have to combine them both because studying the material helps both actions. And so you might say, okay, let's, let's weight them equally. Um, well, then you can see, okay, cheating on the homework has a marginal benefit of nine towards the final grade, whereas studying the material has a marginal benefit of six plus two, which is eight. So that's still not going to work. But if you uh, weight them just so, if you say the final grade is, is three F1 plus five F2, um, then you can check that uh, studying the material is the best action and all effort should be invested into this action. Why is this? Is because cheating on homework will give a marginal benefit proportional to nine times three, which is 27. So cheating on the exam will give five times five, which is 25. Whereas studying the material, you get six times three plus two times five, which is 28. So all, all the students will want to um, incentivize, invest all their effort just in X2. So the, the, this is the, the solution to this problem, but, uh, and, and it involved this nice linear combination of, of the two feature values, but we can ask for a more broad class of mechanisms that the, the evaluator can choose from. And in the original paper, um, Kleinberg and Raghavan presume that any such mechanism should be monotone, which means that uh, higher feature values should yield higher scores, and plus another technical condition, which I don't want to talk about right now. Um, but, uh, and, and so, so this, is, this is the space of mechanisms they're considering. It it's a, embodies the realistic constraint that these, these are really scores. These, these are good things. So if an agent wanted to perform poorly um, on one of the features, um, they, 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 have that, um, they have that agency to do so. So it's a, it's a realistic constraint over the, the class of um, mechanisms that are admissible. And we can ask the more restrictive question though, is does there exist a linear mechanism to choose, to incentivize the agents to choose admissible action? So this is a variant of this problem where we're only searching over a smaller class of possible mechanisms where you're taking a linear combination of all the feature values. So there's an orthogonal direction to this, which is if instead of some list of admissible actions, the, the evaluator has in mind a specific profile of effort investment that they'd like the student, the agents to invest effort according to. Okay, so, so some specific X1, X2, dot, dot, dot. Um, and now, and this gives rise to two new problems, which is does there exist a monotone or linear mechanism to incentivize the agent to choose a specific admissible profile? So refer to this as the admissible profile variant of the problem. So the first big result from this paper by Kleinberg and Raghavan was that there exists a monotone mechanism to incentivize given effort profile if and only if there exists a linear one. Okay, so without loss of generality, we can restrict attention just to searching over linear mechanisms. These monotone linear problem variants are equivalent. And furthermore, whether a given effort profile is incentivizable depends only on the set of actions it is supported over, not by how much uh, effort the evaluator would like uh, invested in each of the actions, just the, the set of non-zero effort. Um, actions that they, they would like to incentivize. So this means that these this admissible profile and the admissible action variants are equivalent as well. So in fact, all four of these problems are equivalent in a certain sense. And so it's really one evaluation problem. And they show that it is solvable in polynomial time uh, via linear programming. So our main question is, do these nice structural and algorithmic results extend to settings with multiple agent types? And as I've hinted, uh, spoiler alert, no, they don't. And so there are some very interesting things that break, and I want to, and and I want to show you on, on the next uh, slide a little example of, of what can go wrong. So here we have an example where there are two agents S1 and S2, and they both have a separate um, functions, uh, separate effort, separate effort conversion functions from the actions X1 and X2 to the features F1 and F2, and. Uh, P just think of it as some arbitrary parameter. So it's 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 a lot like the, the previous example where we have some good action that helps both features and some bad action that only helps one of the features. So there's an interesting trade-off similar to the previous problem. Um, so first observation is that there exists a linear mechanism that will incentivize either agent to choose the profile one zero. Okay, so if we just care about S1, for example, and we want them to spend all the effort on X1, we just basically say, okay, the score is just equal to F1. Okay, this is monotone, this is linear, that, that's all, it's all good. Um, but, but that of course won't work for S2. If P equals um, six, uh, then you can work out that there is a linear mechanism that'll simultaneously incentivize both agents to invest effort only into X1. 
and this is to take the just weight the two things equally okay you can just check a marginal benefit of the x1 is higher than marginal benefit of x2 so so far so good this is this is nice but now let's change p so if p is equal to 4 uh, then it turns out that there is not a single linear mechanism that will simultaneously incentivize both agents to choose x, the action x1 and not invest in the effort into x2. So to prove this, we suppose that we do have some mechanism, which is, of, which is so we're assuming it's linear. So we say, okay, it's some beta 1 times the value of feature f1 time plus beta 2 times the value of f2. And then we just look at incentives. So if we want s1 to prefer x1 to x2, then it better be that the payoff they receive from X1, which is four times beta one plus four times beta two, that will be that their total payoff from investing into X1 is greater than or equal to nine beta two, which is their payoff from X2. And so just simplifying that equation, that, that is equivalent to four beta one is greater than or equal to five beta two. And there's some symmetry here, and you can just check analogously that for agent S2 to prefer investing effort only into X1, we better have four beta two greater than or equal to five beta one. So looking at these two equations, there's an inconsistency here. The only non-negative betas that will satisfy these equations is setting both of them equal to zero. Okay, so, so this is kind of a stupid mechanism. This is the evaluator saying, okay, your score is going to be zero no matter what you do. So therefore, uh, it's, it, it's good if you, it, therefore you're weakly incentivized to invest effort into X1. And this is not a kind of solution we would like to admit. And in fact, if you look at the the technical definition of monotonicity, this will violate the, the technical condition I swept under the rug earlier. There has to be some way to improve your score uh, just to rule out uh, these, these tri this trivial sort of mechanism. So this is actually not a solution. Um, so in fact, there is no linear mechanism that will incentivize both agents to choose X1. However, there is a nonlinear mechanism that is still is monotone, namely uh, taking the min of F1 and F2. Okay, the, so this, you say the score is the minimum of your two feature values. And now it's it's pretty obvious that um, X1 is, is the best action. You should invest all effort into X1 because investing more effort into X2 will just improve F2 greater than F1 and, and won't improve the minimum at all. Um, and this holds for both agents. Um, so that this this is the this is this is a solution. So we've already seen a violation of this first theorem of Kleinberg and, and Raghavan in the setting of just two agents where we have to not restrict attention only to linear mechanisms, we have a larger class of mechanisms to search over. So this makes things very much more difficult. Um, and at p equals one, it turns out there's not even a monotone mechanism at all. Okay, so I wanna go through the proof of this because it's instructive to um, uh, the main uh, theorem of our, our, our paper of characterizing when a monotone mechanism exists. So we suppose that there is some monotone mechanism towards a contradiction. Um, and we don't get to say it's of some form beta one F1 plus beta two F2, it's just any monotone mechanism at all. So I'm gonna consider the following um, profiles here. So think of the, the profile one zero is what we'd like the agent to invest effort into. And one half, one half is not an admissible profile because they're spending half their time on the bad action. Okay, so for agent S1 to prefer one zero to one half, one half, it must be that whatever the payoff they get from playing that, which is, M of four one because if they play one zero then they get uh, four value on feature one and zero and and one value on feature two, um, then M of four one must be greater than or equal to M of two five because two five is the feature vector they get by playing one half one half and check that. Monotonicity now kicks in and says that whatever M of two five is if if, if M is going to be monotone that better be strictly greater than M of one four. Okay, so, and then we symmetrically can argue the same thing for S2 and get that M of 1, 4 is strictly greater than M of 4, 1. Okay, so we have a contradiction. So generalizing this proof, a little pictorial uh, diagram here of, of, of how the, what, what just happened, is we had a situation where S1 is choosing some inadmissible profile, 1 half, 1 half is a bad profile, and scoring the feature vector 2, 5. Whereas S2, if they choose the admissible profile, scores 1, 4. And the key observation in the proof was that 2, 5 is strictly higher than um, 1, 4. Okay, so whenever this happens, we say that S1 imitates X, S2, okay? So the just to add in some notation here, um, we're going to call this uh, F upper S1 is an F upper S2 are the, the how are the effort conversion functions from this, these profiles into feature vectors. 
I'm going to call that miscible profile X star. Okay, so it's some function that says given any agent, what is the action we would like X star to take? I'm going to call that inadmissible profile X. So the, the, the full definition here is that we fix some admissible pro action profile X star of S for every agent S and some, and some set of agents S, capital S. And we say that S1 can imitate S2 with respect to X star if S1 can play an inadmissible action profile X such that F upper S1 of X is bigger than F upper S2 of X star of S2. And from this, we define, um, gi given any fixed um, function X star, we define the imitation graph with respect to S X star to be the directed graph where you have S as the set of um, vertices and we have an edge from S1 to S2 if and only if S1 can imitate S2. So uh, in this uh, little example here, the, the P equals one example, this was the imitation graph. We had a situation where S1 could imitate S2 and S2 could imitate S1. And if you look carefully at the proof that I gave, uh, the fundamental observation is that it has a cycle. And this is a very general argument. If you have a cycle in the imitation graph, it's not going to be possible to incentivize all agents to invest effort um, according to X star. So um, this is the, I've almost completely proved this easier direction of this theorem, which shows that the converse also holds as well. So here is one of the main results of our paper is that let A be the set of admissible profiles. So this could be a simplex supported over admissible actions, or it could be just a single point. And the theorem is that it is possible to incentivize all agents in S, so any set S, to choose effort profiles in A using a monotone mechanism, if and only if there is some X star such that the imitation graph with respect to X star has no cycles. Little asterisks here, there is a technicality that I don't wanna get into in this talk. You can read the paper to read the full version of this theorem, but this, this, is, the, this is the spirit of the result. And the, and so, so I've already shown you one direction. Um, another direction, it's given an imitation graph without cycles, we wanna be able to construct a mechanism and uh, you can read our paper and see the, the, the proof and it, it, it is constructive. So it tells you exactly how you're going to um, score the agents based on the feature values in a monotone way. And of course, is not going to be linear in general. It is the, the, the general mechanism we construct has maxes and mins and piecewise defined functions. So because, because as we've seen, it's not always possible to get a linear mechanism when a monotone one exists. So given this result, um, this lets us at, tackle the question of, okay, given some input in an instance to this, this evaluation problem, um, what, how, how do we find a good mechanism? And recall there are four different variants of this evaluation problem that in the one agent case um, were all equivalent. Um, and now it turns out they're not equivalent anymore if there are multiple agents. So that, that makes things a lot more interesting. And in fact, we're gonna add even one more dimension orthogonal dimension to this uh, problem, which is whether we're trying to incentivize all agents or just a maximum number of agents, which is a more general optimization problem to choose admissible actions or profile. So now we have eight problems. The, the, and there's, there's, there's three orthogonal dimensions, whether we're searching for a monotone or a linear mechanism, whether we're trying to incentivize all agents or just a maximum number, and whether we're trying to incentivize a specific profile or any profile supported by admissible actions. And we characterize using um, this, our theorem about imitation graphs, of the computational complexity of all eight variants of the problem. And you can see that some of them are solvable in polynomial time always. Some of them are tractable if the number of features is small. That's, that's what this N here is, the number of features. Uh, but you're still allowing for um, any number of agents in the input. And it, the two of them, the, this maximizing number of agents for monotone mechanism, I mean, either scenario is NP complete, even for two features. So um, wrapping up here, um, I want to return to this question too, is this question of can we do any better than these simple linear evaluation mechanisms? So if you believe Kleinberg and Raghavan, their main answer is, well, if all agents have the same type, no. This is a very interesting result. It says that the things that we do in practice um, in, in, in real courses you know, are actually optimal. That you're not restricting yourself by only having these linear evaluation mechanisms. But of course, our paper says that if you have a setting with multiple agent types, both the kinds of mechanisms required and the algorithms needed to find them must necessarily become much more complicated. And, and that's the main takeaway of this paper. There's a, a few... Uh, extensions you can consider on making the model richer or and there's an interesting um, approximation problem that, that we can consider that um, we have that that would be an interesting question to study for future work but I'll end there and happy to take any questions. Thank you.